Are you ready to take your cyber security career to the next level? Do you want yourself to be recognized as a global information security professional? If so, welcome to this video. My name is Manoj Sharma and I am a CISSP coach and a Udemy instructor. I have helped thousands of people getting CISSP certified. In this video, I am going to provide you every insight about the CISSP certification. So let's get started. So CISSP stands for Certified Information System Security Professional. It is actually provided by a US non-profitable organization called as the International Information System Security Certification Consortium. Quite a mouthful, right? And that is the reason why we call it as ISC2 in simple short format. It is a non-profitable organization and it is specialized in training and certification for cybersecurity professionals. So that is what is CISSP. Now, why CISSP is so much in demand? You know what? There is a very common uh, fact across the industry. Cybersecurity professionals are highly technical in nature and their focus is always uh, preventing their systems and the information and so on. On the other side, the business side of it is always focused on revenues and uh, you know, uh, return on investment. And this is because the right way security is not communicated to the business and there is always a gap. And that is why every business leader want to hire people who can understand cyber security and they can also understand business. And this is where CISSP is the best certification for the same. It actually makes you ready to understand the both the aspect of cyber security. That means technical as well. On the other side, you understand the business as well. So that is the reason why everybody want to hire a CISSP. Now let's understand why to do CISSP certification. There are a lot of benefits for this, right? Number one, this particular certification is globally recognized. You go to any country across the world, CISSP is highly regarded. So it is a kind of a de facto standard or you can say it's a gold standard in the cybersecurity industry. Once you do CISSP, it is easy for you to advance your career and climb up the leadership level. That is where you are also being paid high, right? Across the industry, the same thing. And then uh, once you do CISSP, you are going to go through a rigorous curriculum, which will make you a real security champion. Believe me, everything in CISSP is so practical and you can relate each and everything to the real world. Who should do CISSP? Now, simple answer is cybersecurity professionals, whoever is looking to enhance their careers, number one. There might be that you are IT professional and you are also sharing some activities from security and you have a intent to go and get the CISSP certification. Definitely is the time for you to make a swift transition because CISSP is making that possible for you. The third thing is there might be some cybersecurity leaders who are looking to learn more and understand the overall picture of cybersecurity so that they can serve better and they can advance in their, in their career. That is where also though those people should also do CISSP. So there is a criteria which says that you should have five years of paid full time work experience in any two domains of uh, CISSP. There is a common body of knowledge and in that there are eight domains defined and we will talk about that in just a while. But you need to have or showcase the experience mapping to two uh, such domains. Thankfully, the part time and internship experience is also counted in this experience. So if you have that, you can apply it while endorsing uh, for this. Then experience should be in cyber security related roles. It should not be that you are doing accounting and then you are actually showing that accounting experience in uh, cyber security. That will not work. But if you are into a role where you are handling shared responsibility for IT and cyber security, you can map such activities, uh, you know, there and then you can fill up the endorsement form. If you do not have five years of experience, because many people, they reach out to me, they just have two to three years of experience and they are very, very uh, passionate about doing the CISSP certification. I would say 
देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड एज एक्सपीरियंस वेवर यू शुड गो एंड लेवरेज इट सो देर आर टू कंडीशन फॉर वेवर यू गेट वन एवर वेवर इफ यू हैव ए फोर ईयर डिग्री प्रोग्राम फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू हैव ए इंजीनियरिंग डिग्री विद यू देन दैट कैन हेल्प यू टू गेट ए वन ईयर वेवर on the other side if you have some other certification from isc2 there is a list they maintain if your certification is available in that list uh, then you can also uh, you know apply for the waiver if you do not have that list and you you are still have some questions on that feel free to comment me in the comment section and i am going to help you now what if i am a fresher and i am very passionate to uh, ciessp right see there is a huge shortage of uh, security professional right now in into the industry so isc2 is taking this as a main thing and they uh, you know uh, even a fresher can go and get certified uh, you will not be getting the cissp certification but you when you go for the endorsement process it will be called as isc2 associate membership believe me it also brings a lot of value and this is a testimony for you that you are somebody who is putting the real effort uh, into cyber security into your learning and those kind of stuff so that really helps you in your career you can also apply for cissp designation once uh, you get the associate membership and then later on you complete your 5 years of experience you can apply for the same and you you get your cissp designation at that point of time now before we go to the next point i want to let you know about an amazing program called as cissp success tool the program is for all those people like you who might be struggling with your cissp preparation the program comes with one to one mentorship 100 hours of cissp classes along with 60 hour of live exam practice can you believe it 60 plus hours of live exam practice to make sure that when you go to the real cissp exam you feel like oh man it's nothing it's like something i do day in and day out so that's the intent there most importantly this program is very different from the boot camp style trainings which are available across the industry which actually barely helps you to pass the cissp certificate we have a great success rate and i myself has helped thousands of people getting cissp certificate now what are the different cissp domains which we are going to learn in this entire stuff right so you can see here are those eight domains and there are different hats which you have to wear when going through these domains and that makes you a real cyber security professional number one there is uh, domain number one which is security governance and risk management this actually contributes to 16% of your exam and here you need to wear a hat of a ciso and as well as a risk manager When we go to domain number 2 you need to wear a hat of a data security guy you have to be focused on data and where this data is kept all those different assets where data is kept is how you are maintaining security of those assets throughout their life cycle when you go to domain number 3 you need to have a completely different hat and that is about a system security architect so this is where you understand a lot of concept from a architecture and design perspective When you go to domain number 4 you become a network security engineer. Do not expect that you need to learn CCNA or CCNP just to clear your CISSP not that way. We are just trying to understand what are those security architecture concept or you can say network security architecture concept which you can apply well while you are setting up your network security and what are those components which will help you to keep your network safe and secure every time. In domain number 5 we are going to talk about uh, identity and access management now this is a small domain but again contributes to 13% of your exam very very tricky but very good domain this is where you are going to wear a hat of a identity and access management guy then in domain number 6 you are going to be an auditor you are going to be an assessor you are going to be a tester so this is the perspective for domain number 6 in domain number 7 you are going to be a security operations guy 
who knows okay how i am going to pull up logs from the system how i am going to store on the system how i am going to implement my sim solution and then identify some kind of incident which comes to you and then how the entire incident response investigation and those kind of thing happen you are also going to talk about how you are going to set up resiliency and what if there is a disaster you are going to manage so all those kind of you know stuff on a day-to-day -day, uh, life of a security professional is what you will learn in domain number seven in domain number eight you are going to be a guy who is working with the software development team and you are actually accountable for making sure that security is taken care in the software development environment so this cissp is going to make you a all-rounder into all different domains of security I would say I, I am a big fan of CISSP. I got certified back in 2016 and since then I am helping people more and more to get CISSP certified because this is the only certification which will make you a overall champion into the security stuff. So CISSP exam is a costly exam and it costs you $749 for single attempt. Nowadays, thanks to ISC2 that they have also come up with something called as peace of mind and you have to just pay $199 extra to get that extra attempt. I would always recommend you always go with the option number two because this way you are mentally free when you go to the CISSP exam and this will make sure that when you are mentally free, you are passing your CISSP in the first attempt. And unfortunately, if something bad happens as well, you always have the second attempt which can help you to pass your CISSP in the second attempt and you don't have to pay again $749. So I would highly recommend you go for option number two. So this exam is a three hours exam from April 15, 2024 and uh, this entire exam is a CAT based exam which I am going to talk about a little bit. There are going to be 100 to 150 questions which you may face. Now you might be wondering, in other exams, there is always a fixed number of questions which we face. Not here in CISSP because the entire CISSP exam is based on uh, what you call it as a CAT, computerized adaptive test. And this is the algorithm working in the back end who is going to make a judgment on your estimated proficiency level. The moment your proficiency level reaches to 95%, you pass the exam even with less questions also. But at the same time, if you are not able to achieve that 95% estimated proficiency level, it keeps you continue. And during the exam, if your estimated proficiency level drops down to 70%, then you fail the exam then and there. So these are some important things from the CAT perspective. All the questions are multiple choice and drag and drop. One good thing is there are no kind of questions where there are multiple answers for the same question. I think that's a wonderful thing. Otherwise, this will make CISSP like a hell, right? So that is there. Then passing grade is 70% and nobody knows how that is calculated. But one thing is for sure, you have to also go and score 70% in each and every domain. Uh, I assume that is what is their policy because if somebody fails the CISSP exam, the result sheet which comes out says you are above proficiency, you are near proficiency or you are below proficiency in any one of the domain. So that means you are being assessed for each and every domain and you cannot take any domain lightly. Now, whenever you are going to book your exam, always make sure that you do that in advance. Because not all Pearson centers are, uh, you know, authorized to conduct the CISSP exam. There are very limited approved centers which are approved by ISC2 because they maintain a very high level of uh, standard in their certification. So that is what I am saying. Go ahead and whenever you book the exam, plan it little ahead and see what is the authorized center in your particular area. <coughs> This is what I was talking about. This is called as computerized adaptive test. And this is the reason why there are different uh, count of questions which people get in their CISSP exam. There is an algorithm who is working in the back end and each and every uh, question which is going to come next is dynamically decided by the algorithm based on your response to the previous question. The difficulty level of the next question is also decided by the algorithm based on how you have answered the previous question. 
so that is why you see all these questions are variable they are dynamically being uh, you know uh, given to you in the exam right congratulations you got your CISSP exam pass are you CISSP certified now answer is no after you pass your CISSP exam within 24 hours you are going to get a email from ISC2 requesting for the endorsement and this is where you have to click on the link you have to go to the endorsement page which is there on isc2 website you have to fill up all the details you have to fill up your experience you have to fill up your supervisor details as well you also have to give a membership id of a cissp who is there in a good standing so these are the kind of things i have made a detailed video you can see it uh, the card is above when you pass your CISSP exam and you need any help related to these steps, there is a detailed video which is available for you on my YouTube channel. Let's say you got CISSP certified. You went through the endorsement process and you got the endorsement designation as well. Now you are a CISSP, proud CISSP. You can put it on LinkedIn and you know uh, put it against your name. But then question is, how you are going to maintain it throughout your life do you need to go through uh, again with the certification cycle after every three year answer is no if you are doing these two things first maintain 40 cpes per uh, year that is where you can go to attend webinars you are going to attend some kind of training you are going to write some books you are going to give some lectures all those things you have to take proof and go to the ioc2 website and put it as a cpe for you once they are approved your cpe is counted for you there are a lot of courses which are also provided by ioc2 you can automatically go and attend them and automatically your cpe will be getting credited on the other side you also need to maintain annual maintenance fee currently it is 135 dollar for uh, for uh, for a ciss certified guy which you have to pay if you are having associate membership obviously this is less these are the kind of things which i wanted to cover in this video i hope you like this entire video in a short and crisp manner i have provided you all the information if there are further questions do not hesitate uh, commenting on this particular video i am going to help you so feel free to like share and subscribe and if you want to get trained from me course from me there is a free master class which you can come and join and you can join the ciissp success toolkit which is the world best uh, you know toolkit to pass your ciissp exam till then i will see you in the next video and bye for now